Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Crafting and Crime Daily. Today, we're going to talk about day four of the Chad Daybell case. Yes, lots to get to. Text messages, emails, uh, lots of stuff going around yesterday. Three witnesses were on the stand. This is a case where Chad Daybell has been charged with conspiracy to commit the murders of Tylee Ryan, J.J. Vallow, and his former wife, Tammy Daybell. Also, he is charged with their murder, and he is additionally charged with attempting to get some life insurance fraudulently. Yeah. Anyway, we haven't heard any evidence of that yet, but it's coming to that. So yesterday, the first person on the stand was an FBI. She wasn't a, an agent. She called herself a tactical specialist, and it was her job to review all of these Google searches. So she took an account that was known to be Chad Daybell's um, account and accounts that she knew to be Lori Daybell's accounts. And they did a Google search and she got the results of those searches and she it was her job to go through them and pull out anything that she felt was relevant. Now, at the time that the, they got these searches, the children were still missing. So she was trying to find stuff that would be related to why they might be missing. And then up later on, some of this other stuff became relevant too. Yeah. So the dates of the searches were between October of 2018, which is when Chad and Lori Daybell met. Um, and between uh, then and January of 2020, now, one of the searches was Ned Schneider. Now, this is Chad's Chad's account, Google account. He was searching Ned Schneider, who apparently is someone that died back in 1996. Then he searched bodies possessed after original occupant dies. Okay. So... Uh, the jury is now getting a flavor of, uh, you know, this woman tells the jury that uh, this is becoming a theme and it's going to be a theme. Different people are possessed. They have different names. So for, she was asked, you know, what was the relevance of this Ned Schneider? And after a lot of objections by John Pryor, the defense attorney, um, she was able to say that, the reason this was significant is because they believed Chad and Lori were believed and were telling other people that Charles Vallow, who is Lori's um, former husband, the man she was married to when she met Chad Daybell, he, uh, they, they believed him to be possessed. And she said, that's a theme in this case that they believe the children are possessed. They're, they believe other people are possessed and, you know, it's their job to cast out these demons. Um, so throughout this investigation, you're going to, she told the jury, you're going to hear a lot about possession. So I'm sure the jury's going, oh my God, what did we get ourselves into here? Um, yeah. <laughs> so she said, Chad, uh, Lori was referring to Charles Vallow as Ned Schneider. And that uh, he was possessed by Ned Schneider. Anyway, so on May 5th and May 7th of 2019, there were searches by both Chad and Lori, different searches, different computers, uh, of Malachite jewelry. And we know at this point, May of 2019, Charles is still alive, her husband, Tammy's still alive, his wife, and they are searching for Malachite jewelry. And this is significant because we know they ultimately... Uh, exchange Malachite wedding bands after their spouses are deceased. Yes. On June 1st of 2019, um, they start referring to Charles Vallow as Iplos, another person to have, I guess they, they drove a cast out Ned and this, this other spirit or other, I don't know what you call it. Somebody possesses Charles named Iplos. Then on July 9th of 2019, 
This is two days before Charles Vallows is murdered by Lori's brother, Alex Cox. There's a search for when, what happens when you surprise someone with accusations? This is by Chad. This is Chad searching this. Then in September, um, September 8th of 2019, the day before uh, we know that I'm trying to get this right, that Chad burned something on his property because he told, he sent a text to his wife that he was burning something on the property. He had searched the wind, which way the wind was going to be blowing that day. On July 21st, 2019, he was, uh, Lori was searching for Gerber life insurance for children. Now, no policies were ever purchased, but she was, um, not that they could find, but she was searching for that. And this is, they're both still alive at this point, both of the children. Then on July 26, Lori's searching service animals, several different searches related to service animals. Now this is just days after Charles Vallow is murdered. And we know that JJ Vallow had a service animal that Lori ultimately got rid of. August 25th, 2019, there's a, another search for wedding bands, Malachite wedding bands. Now, by now, Charles is dead. Tammy's still alive, but they're still searching for those Malachite wedding bands. On September of 2019, and this has to, it, it sort of bookends the time frame of when JJ is last known to be alive. There's several searches of the phone number for Kennedy Elementary, which is where he went to school. And then there was a search about finding possessed people. Then on September 30th, there was a search on how to get, I can't read my own writing. Oh, how to get the rear seat out of a cheap Wrangler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we know that that's on September 30th. And we know on October 2nd, somebody in a Jeep Wrangler shoots at Brian Boudreaux, who is, yeah, I know, I need to, we need like a, um, a map of who's who and who, what's what, who's on first. Brian Boudreaux, Boudreaux was married to Lori Vallow's niece, Melanie. They were divorced. Melanie's now part of this church. There's a couple of different Melanies in this case. So not to be confused with Melanie Gibb, who's a significant part of this uh, cult, so to speak. So also on October 2nd, the, the very day that this shooting happens, uh, the attempted shooting of Brian Boudreaux, there is a video, and I don't, it wasn't shown, a video of Chad and Lori at the storage unit, at a storage unit uh, in Idaho, putting in a spare tire, put a, putting a spare tire in the storage room. Now we, we know in order for them, we know that that Jeep was missing a spare tire. And we know that this is a Jeep that was known to be driven by Tylee Ryan. Then on October 22nd, days, three days after Tammy Daybell dies, there's a search for wedding dresses. It actually happens to be the same date as the funeral. Lori is searching for wedding dresses on the funeral, day of the funeral of Tammy Daybell. Yeah. Wow. So on cross-examination, uh, the of course, and John Pryor has mentioned this every chance he gets, you know, he reiterated that Chad is not involved in the death of Charles Vallow or the shooting of Bat Brian Boudreaux. Okay, we know that. May not so sure more to come on that. <laughs> so, so she, uh, this person, this tech technical specialist um, was asked, you know, about the last known sighting of JJ Vallow, which was the afternoon of September 22nd. And so John Pryor walks her through, well, that afternoon on, we know that Alex Cox was at the house where, J.J. Vallow was living. Melanie Gibb was at the house. Melanie Gibb's husband, David Warwick, was at the house. Lori Vallow was at the house. So why didn't you do Google searches on all these other people? Yeah. 
why not do Google searches? And then he suggested to her, he goes, isn't it possible that a reason uh, that you might want to get rid of your kids is maybe they witness the murder of Charles Vallow? That's a stretch, I think, because we don't know if they actually witnessed anything. We're not, nobody's really sure if they were actually witnesses to the murder of Charles Vallow. Midday, after, after they break for lunch in this case, they come back and there is a hearing, an emergency, another one of these emergency <laughs> hearings, because uh, the prosecution suspects that John Pryor, the defense attorney, is going to be calling Rob Wood, the prosecutor, as a witness during the case, and they want to put a stop to it. And um, so John Pryor says, no, I, I have no intention of calling him as a witness. But there are over 340 texts between texts and emails between Rob Wood and Melanie Gibb, the friend of Lori, who's involved in this cult, probably preparing her for being a witness and getting in, you know, exchanging information. But he says, I plan to introduce all of those texts and emails in this case. And if Melanie Gibb can't authenticate those emails, then the only other person to authenticate them, in other words, someone that come in and say, yes, those are true and accurate. Those are the emails I sent to Melanie and Melanie sent to me. Somebody has to be able to say that. If Melanie doesn't say it, then they, the only other person that could say it is the prosecutor, Rob Wood. Well, the judge shut that down. The judge is like, no, Rob Wood will not be called as a witness in this case. So I don't, they're not going to come in. Those those emails and texts are not going to come in unless someone can authenticate them. And if Melanie can't authenticate them, then they're not coming in. I, I want to know what's in all these emails, though. I'm very curious. Yeah. Then we, uh, they talk about some emails that were sent from Charles Vallow. There was a lengthy email sent from Charles Vallow to Chad Daybell that, from Charles Vallow. This is in June of 2019, just weeks before Charles is murdered. Charles is the former husband of Lori, sending an email to Chad, tell, talking, thanking him for coming to visit, talking about how they, they had a nice conversation and could, you know, I'm, can you help me come write my, could you come help me write my book and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this is not... Charles writing this email. It's Lori writing the email to Chad. Well, Charles finds this email. And when he finds this email, he, he, there's several texts and emails that go back and forth between him and Lori. And he says, you know, if you don't come clean about this, you know, this is clearly, this is the guy you're having an affair with. If you don't come clean, I'm going to send uh, this email to his wife. And we don't know if, we know that it was sent. Some emails were sent from Charles ultimately to Tammy Daybell. But she, we don't know that she ever read them. She was working in the school system and this is over the summer. So she may never have read them or they went to spam or nobody knows. Or she maybe saw it, thought it was junk, you know, or just, just didn't read. I get strange stuff all the time and I just like delete it. Yeah. Then there was a, an email sent from Chad to Lori about how he feels like he's a grown-up Harry Potter. I got to tell you, Harry Potter has way more personality than you do, Chad Davo. Yes, way more. But the reason he feels this way is because that, you know, he he feels like he's living in the house with the, his parents. I forget what his parents' names were, the, the people that he was living with. And I, he feel I feel like I'm living under the stairs, and then I get out I get out of every few weeks to go visit my goddess lover, and then I have to return to living under the stairs, and I feel like I'll be free of all this soon. What? That is so weird. Okay, you are not Harry Potter. Then there was a phone call that they played between that Chad makes to a funeral home, and the funeral home saved this, which was crazy that they did. But he's pretending to be someone he's not. Chad 
Dabel, D-A-B-E-L, D-E, some weird spelling of the name. And when I heard, because I had never heard this call before, when I heard it, I, th I thought, why is he misspelling his name? Well, because he's pretending to be somebody else. He goes on to say that his uncle passed away and he just wants to get an estimate on cremation and shipping the body to New Orleans. How much is that? That's all we want. It's all the family wants. And he gets a price. They, eventually they give him a price. $16.95 for the cremation. Then there's all these other charges. And yeah, interesting. Okay, then uh, they were just talk about a patriarchal blessing that was given to Alex Cox. And the timing of this patriarchal blessing is just really crazy. Now, patriarchal blessing in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is where Chad and Lori originated their religion, he was not authorized to give patriarchal blessings, but he decides he's going to give. And it's like one of these once in a lifetime things. You only get one of these in your whole lifetime. And, you know, they give it to you in text form so you can save it and maybe cross stitch it or put it up on the wall. I don't know. But on November 24th of 2019, Charles gives Alex Cock this patriarchal blessing. And this is, uh, a few days before Thanksgiving, we know on Thanksgiving, Alex marries one of the other cult members, Zulema. And then three weeks after that, Alex is dead. But in this blessing, and I didn't read the entire thing, it's it's lengthy. Um, he is referring to Alex in a prior life. And in this prior life, Alex's job was to be this valiant warrior and protect this beautiful goddess, which is Lori. And that's been his whole job in every life. Okay. Do, 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 do. So weird, isn't it? <laughs> in my prior life. Um, then the last expert was a social security uh, department expert. He had also given testimony in the Lori Daybell case. Lori, you know, when she found out, because, you know, Charles is murdered by her brother, and then she's trying to get the million dollars of life insurance, thinking, you know, my, that's in my name. Well, Charles was on to her, as we can see by those emails, to the threatening to go to Tammy. He was on to her. He changed the beneficiary to Kay Woodcock, grandmother of J.J. Vallow. And so she was not happy, but she had to tell Chad Daybell, hey, we're not getting that million dollars of life insurance. But she tells him, ah, I'm still getting over 4000 a month in Social Security. So she was getting $1,859 a month for Tylee Ryan, based on the fact that Tylee's father, Joe Ryan, had passed away. She was getting $1,951 a month for J.J. Vallow, because his father had passed away, murdered. And she was getting $1,951 a month as the widow of Charles Bellow. So a total of $5,761 a month in Social Security. Now, we know she was convicted of fraud for all of this. The Social Security, uh, when she couldn't produce the kids, they cut off the Social Security. Yeah, so she didn't get it for long, <laughs> but several months, yeah. Several months she got that Social Security. All right, guys, I'm going to be live tonight at 7 p.m. And I think I'm going to do watercolors. I think that's what I promised you. So I'm going to get it all over here. We're going to play around with the new watercolor pencils that I got, see what they can and can't do. And uh, I will see you then. If not, I'll see you in tomorrow's. Um, I, I, I need to update you on the Arizona Rancher because there has been... Uh, the prosecution has rested their case and the defense is putting on their case. We pr probably should find out today um, whether or not George Kelly is going to take the stand. So more on that to come. Have a great day, everybody. And I will see you tonight or tomorrow. Bye, everybody.